in those days, long before the world came to know Haven and well before my hair bore streaks of silver, I was a spirited young man named Zephyr. Nearly twenty years before, my footsteps had yet to imprint upon the vast landscapes of Ethel. But then I march on, in his boundless wisdom, paired me with Ilarion, a seasoned Nephilim with a knack for conjuring constructs of substance and utilizing them in battle, and Illyria, a fierce elvish swordswoman with telekinetic powers. Our destination lay in the vast deserts at the southern fringes of the kingdom of Nineplay where sand dunes whispered of ancient secrets and where the Samians, creatures of sand and age-old spells, roamed. This boundless expanse was named the Rasses, in honor of the legendary princess of yesteryears, their Sam. Her tale was the stuff of legend, shared under the moonlight, but I digress. Our journey brought us to the illustrious city of Parsina, a timeless jewel in the desert's embrace. There, the Mori dynasty held dominion, their lineage as ancient as the sands surrounding them. At its helm was us Mori, a regent of considerable stature, his authority augmented by his union with his three queens. It was he who beckoned the order, for a shadow had cast over his realm. Whole settlements vanished overnight, like mirages, consumed by the insatiable sands. Families, dreams, futures, all interred beneath layers of relentless grains. In those unfolding days beneath the relentless sun of the Rassis, the regent Asmori appointed his most trusted general, Azade Cordobella, to accompany us. Whispers in the wind suggested Azade was once his favorite mistress, with dreams of becoming his one and only queen. All of that would come to pass only if Queen Nin of the Kingdom would give her blessing. With Azade at our side, we traversed the desolation, our steps hastened by the ethereal portals I conjured. As Alarian and Deliria poured over the sands, tracing sigils of ancient lore, they reached a grim conclusion, the forbidden art of magic had been invoked here. My own inquiries led me to discern the involvement of a Samian, one of the fabled sand beings of the desert. As the days lengthened into weeks, as a day and I grew close. For a fleeting moment, it seemed as though our fates might intertwine in ways that transcended mere duty. But fate has a habit of revealing its cruel jests. One day, my eyes fell upon a curious object in Azadeh's possession an otherworldly bag glowing with an eerie light. This was no ordinary satchel. It was the legendary bag of eternal sand. The atmosphere tightened, her expression shattered any illusions of innocence. Cornered, Azadeh spoke, her voice tinged with regret. I wish we'd met under different circumstances. Maybe then, we could have had a future. With that admission, I understood. She was the agent of destruction, wielding the ancient sands against her own people. When questioned, she revealed her lineage descended from Princess their San herself, the one who ventured from the far-off kingdom of Mizzle. The bag of eternal sand had been in her family ever since. Before I could so much as utter a spell, she flung open the bag. An avalanche of sand burst forth, catapulting me into the confines of my tent. A semin creature materialized, its form ever shifting, as if mocking our frailty. In that instant, as a day vanished, leaving no trace behind but the grit of deceit and the ruin of my own unspoken hopes. In the wake of as a day's abrupt disappearance, I found myself face to face with the rampaging Samian creature. It lunged at me with savage intent, a living nightmare born of sand and malevolence. I rolled out of my tent just in time, summoning Alarian and Deliria to join me in battle. A storm of elemental energies clashed, filling the desert night with flashes of ethereal light and roars of unnatural fury. We fought with everything we had, our powers leaving trails of power that etched into the fabric of Ethel itself. It was a devastating battle. Alarian even lost his right hand in the struggle. Yet, in the end, we emerged victorious. The Samian disintegrating into nothing more than a whirlwind of harmless grains. After the creature's defeat, I requested permission from the High Marchon to stay in the region, driven by a burning need to locate Azadeh and stop her from causing further devastation. 
Months passed like falling sands through an hourglass. Finally, she found me or perhaps it was the other way around in a bustling marketplace teeming with life. She had chosen this locale wisely, understanding I would be hesitant to engage in battle amidst a crowd of innocents. When our eyes met, I questioned her motives. Her gaze was frigid as she claimed her actions were driven by a birthright, denouncing the Mori dynasty as impostors. This throne is mine, she declared, as a direct descendant of Princess Versailles. She warned me to cease my search for her, confessing her plans to flee to another world, another reality. She named her ally in this new world, a man called Xis. For a fleeting moment, my heart wavered. I considered forgiving her, offering her a path back. But before my thoughts could coalesce into words, she vanished. Drawn into the bag of eternal sand, she disappeared, taking the bag and her mysteries with her. And so, I returned to the Citadel, my quest unfulfilled. There, I assumed the role of a mentor, preparing the next generation of Nephilim for the many trials that lay ahead. But the saga of Asidae, like a sandstorm, remains an unresolved chapter in my life, a swirling question mark that I carry with me to this day. That's but a single chapter in my labyrinthine tale. Until we meet again, in this world or another, May your own story be as enriching as the adventures that have shaped me.